Well, g'day curd nerds. Today we're talking about do-it-yourself cheese presses. There's been a lot of um, questions, I suppose, from lots of people on, uh, you know, where can I get a cheap cheese press? Where can I get the instructions on how to make one? So what I did, I reached out to a couple of Facebook groups. Uh, the first one being uh, Learn to Make Cheese and the other one being Curds and Way Down Under. So two very popular cheese making groups. And I got back really good responses. So uh, lots of photos coming up and a few descriptions on kind of how they made their cheese presses. So the first press is from Shera. And Shera says about her press, ours folds down or comes apart for easy storage. I never put it away though. We ship it out all flat. It's so easy. You hang your weight on the end of the horizontal arm and move the vertical leg up to the foot fire up to the five different holes times your weight by two then three then four then five without having to change the weight on the end my husband is an engineer and after a few prototypes this is what we use and sell in the store easy as pie well it's a very simple looking press and uh, looks very practical indeed so the next press is from crystal and crystal says about her press I use four 14 inch bolts, a wooden cutting board with a white one attached. Cut a scrap board for the top, uh, some nuts and washers, a piece of pipe and a flange to hold the weights. If I did it again, I would use something without threads. I need to make the holes a little bigger. It works, but I'm scared the board gets stuck on them. And oh, sorry for the jar, I don't have any cheese to press. <laughs> no, I think it's a very practical, a very simple press. The centre part that you can see on the top board is uh, just a pipe that's been screwed on um, and that's where the weights sit. So the next press is from Greg. Now Greg had, Greg had some instructions uh, but I couldn't convert them to a text file to, to read out. But basically it's uh, some, um, some angled PVC piping uh, with a plate on the bottom and where you see the the red weights there, underneath, and you actually can't see it, underneath the weights, there's actually a T-piece that the weights sit on. And there is, uh, that pipe goes all the way through those purple pipes and sits on top of the follower and presses the cheese that way. So fairly ingenious uh, little design there by Greg. Um, very practical and uh, it doesn't cost very much because you can pick up PVC electrical piping um, just about anywhere. So the next press is by Ilda. And Ilda says that my springs sometimes get stuck. Uh, so the number of turns for tightening is uneven. The little level, or the spirit level on top that you can see there, uh, is the remedy for that. I also love that I can take it apart and wash the cutting boards in the dishwasher. So they're uh, the plastic cutting boards and they've been converted into a press. Uh, and there's a top plate that presses down on the springs. I'm not sure how um, Ilda figures out the, uh, the weight, um, but uh, yeah, I think it's a very practical little press there. Um, and it looks like it's in a pan there for uh, the curds, uh, for the whey to come out. So the next press is by uh, Jeff Healy, and this is all made out of oak, uh, lovely uh, wood, and it's a Dutch press, uh, so it's in the style of a Dutch press, and you can't see the lever at the end, but it's actually got a notch in it where you can hang off uh, jugs of water um, to use as the weights to get the different pressures. You just simply take it up on that centre bar, the, uh, the number, of, number of bolts. So yeah, very simple um, press and uh, looks like it's very functional. So this next press is, uh, there's four pictures here. So it's by John and uh, the description is very simple. So the material that's hollow, stainless steel bar, um, and it's mounted on the wall with three screws. And the pressing bar, as you can see there, gets attached to it. 
and that's what presses down on the cheese mold. Uh, the total bar length out from the wall is um, 120 centimeters, and the distance to from the wall to the pressing bar is 20 centimeters. So there's a calculation um, that he's given me here um, that I won't read out. If you want the calculation, then I'm going to put it into the description below um, so people can figure it out. And you can see in the next photograph here uh, that there's just a weight put on the end. Now, uh, there's a calculation to figure out how much weight to put, and it tells you how much weight uh, is then pressing the cheese. So I'll pop that into the description. So this next one's from Johnny, and it's fairly simple. His comments on the on the press says it's pipes, wood, and weights. So very simple. So it's using pipes and a pipe connector there on the bottom piece of wood, uh, and basically puts weights on top uh, for the amount of weight he wants to press his cheese. So uh, very nice little press. There's another shot of it coming up here where you can see he's just using gym weights uh, of various weights and you get the total and it presses down on the cheese underneath. So pretty cool, nice little press. So the next press is by Kate and it consists of two wooden cutting boards, they look like they're bamboo, uh, with four holes drilled in each board. What she did, she clamped the boards together so the holes were in the same place. Uh, there are four metal bolts, I think they're about 12 inches long, um, and uh, she basically weighs them down uh, with some weights. Very easy uh, to assemble uh, for, uh, and disassemble for storage. So you can see there in this picture, there's a uh, looks like a 10 pound weight on top uh, of the cheese with the follower. So very simple press, but it looks like it works very, very well. So this next press is by Kerry Ann, and it's a spring version as well. Um, and this is a homemade, uh, it's made, so this is our homemade breadboard with tension springs from the local hardware shop. Uh, it has a 50 pound tension spring. Uh, her husband works out how many turns, and sometimes I use old weights um, when she uses this one. When she wants to press two cheeses, it works fine. Um, because obviously it's fairly long, you can see there. Uh, and it's good to have a few spares in handy when teaching classes. So that's uh, Kerry Ann's press. Uh, nice and simple, uh, and it looks like it works very well as well. It looks like the bottom board is covered uh, in some sort of plastic steel. So the next one is uh, from Marcia. And Marcia says about her press, hers is a smaller version of Greg's design. Um, she's still in the construction phase. She used 15 mil PVC pipes, and most fittings uh, are from one of the local hardware stores here in Australia called Bunnings. A chopping board for the centerpiece, uh, and a basket that's going to be used as the uh, the mould for the cheeses. Um, there's four by and five crossway connectors um, that uh, keeps it all together. Um, so yeah, it's it's partly through the con the uh, construction, so it hasn't been finished yet. So the next one is from uh, Meredith, and Meredith says about hers that hers is used with direct weight uh, or can be tensioned with the springs. Uh, they use all thread with washers and wing nuts for the tightening. So the wing nuts at the top tighten that top bar there um, if they want to use the springs. And it looks like she puts the weights uh, on the, the bottom bar there, which then goes onto a follower onto the cheese and there's a nice little drip tray there which which looks pretty good as well um, certainly saves my method where I take up the whole side so the next one is from Michael and Michael has said about his press which is very well constructed there it's plywood boards electrical galvanized conduit pipe glued into the bottom section wood pipe or wood for pipe guides and frame and CPVC elbow and pipe for drain. Uh, bottom drain area is sealed with clear polyurethane. Uh, this is the first and only press he's ever made and he wouldn't want it any different. So obviously the weight goes on the top and there's a little mesh down the bottom and it drains into his kitchen sink. So nice, uh, simple rudimentary press, but it looks like it works very, very well. So the next press is by Patrick. And it says, he says here that uh, here is the press I made for a few dollars. 
The most difficult part is to find a spring that has decent dimensions and spring rate. Uh, he has made numerous cheeses with the press. It accommodates even fairly big moulds uh, for cheeses made with about 20 litres of milk. The wooden base is cheap, a round cutting board from Walmart. The rest is just stainless steel, all thread, and a few threaded inserts and washers and bolts. Uh, he found the springs on eBay from Poland. Yeah, so it looks like a great little press. The next one is from Roz, which is quite unusual. There's no description on what it is, but uh, she did mention later on that it's basically a cantilever. So she's got a big piece of wood with a groove in it, uh, and she puts that under one of her kitchen cupboards. Now she's checked that they're screwed on properly, uh, and then hands, hangs a weight off the end, and then there's a T-piece underneath that uh, p presses the cheese into uh, a paint bucket, which has holes all the way through it. So all very cheap. Uh, she assures me that the cupboard is screwed onto the wall. So the next one is from uh, Sue, and Sue says about her press that it's two pieces of Malamite MDF board with half-inch dowel for the uprights, uh, weight lifting weights provide the pressure uh, non-slip mat on top to stop the weights from slipping off in case they're not centered properly and there's a nice little drip tray there as well so handy little uh, press that one uh, and made very cheaply by the looks of it uh, which is good because you really want to keep your budget down for this sort of thing and the next one is by Vicky and Vicky says uh, that it's two planks approximately 8 by 22 inches from scrap wood, uh, two wooden dowels which are one inch in diameter and weights are from a thrift store. Uh, she's got a little spirit level there so she can tell that it's level uh, and then basically I think that looks like a can of beans or soup or something that sits on top of the follower uh, which then presses down onto the cheese in the mould and got a little drip tray there for the whey so very ingenious uh, and uh, looks like it's nice and cheap as well which is good. Now this brings me on to the last one by Stephanie. Stephanie's gone all scientific on us here. Um, so I actually come up with a spreadsheet uh, using a bit of maths to calculate, and there's the formulas there, to calculate the tension of the springs that she has for this next press. Anyway, this is the main upright that she's just pulled off the board. It's a threaded bolt, stainless steel. So you can see there that uh, there's the tension spring in the middle. It stopped pressing down by some nuts. Anyway, we're going to see it all put together. So you see the way that the uh, the threaded uh, bolt has been put into the bottom board. So it's a bamboo cutting board. And then when you flip it over, you've got to screw the, the long bolt into it. So this uh, fastens into the bottom. Now she calibra calibrated the springs using a scale, which is a good way to do it. Then you've got to figure out how to keep those measurements somehow. So it looks like she's used... Uh, paddle pop sticks here or ice cream sticks tongue depressors whatever you want to um, say and then they are uh, calibrated using that formula when it's tightened down how many kilograms of pressure as you can see there on the close-up shot how many kilograms of pressure are actually being applied when the springs are pressed down so very ingenious little way of calculating how much pressure to apply to the press uh, and there's uh, Stephanie's press being used in anger there to press some cheese so very nice little scientific based uh, uh, cheese press. Well, there you have it. I think you'll agree that that was pretty informative. Uh, lots of uh, great ideas for cheese presses. You don't actually have to go out and buy expensive cheese presses. Most of the time you can make it from stuff um, that is fairly cheap and readily available. Anyway, thanks for watching the video. Uh, you can check out my cheese press uh, on the video here. Also that you can subscribe to the show so you can catch new and interesting cheese making uh, videos and content. And don't forget that you can support the show via Patreon uh, and uh, every donation goes to helping the show continue. Thanks for watching Curd Nerds and we'll see you next time.